Are you afraid to fail? Or are you really afraid to succeed? Are you afraid of letting your greatness be seen because then you're expected to be great? It's way easier to be expected to lose. It's way easier to be the underdog. And yes, it's motivating, it's fueling to be the underdog, but it's limiting because you're not allowing yourself to live from your highest potential. You're simply not allowing yourself to be seen in that full potential because you're playing small. So today I invite you to notice, are you limiting yourself? and holding yourself back from greatness. I'm taking one step at a time. All I ever need. I stay connected to divine. Got me feeling super free. I know right now this is my time. Only place I need to be. Got reminders around me, I need that. Every step I take, it always leads back. I'm home. home. Let's go. Home is where we be. What I'm is with you good? and you with me. Hopefully you listen closely to those lyrics. That is a big project of mine in the works and that's the energy we're on so let's get started for today welcome to today's episode welcome to today's energy let's tap into today i like saying to today because it feels good to say to today so let's tap into today's energy we're feeling good i hope you had a good morning whatever you're doing right now take a moment to notice where you are you are on a planet spinning through the universe with magical moments happening all around you if you're open to seeing them you will see the miracles if you see a slightest miracle from your blood coursing through your body, from your cells changing, from the thoughts, the patterns in your mind, all those different things, the more you notice those miracles, the more miracles you notice, the more grateful you are for this moment, the more grateful moments are attracted within you. So you are attracting at all times. You are a beautiful being. Let's have a beautiful life. Let's live fantastic. Let's get that energy going. Whew. Okay. I had myself a morning today. I want to talk about why we are afraid of success and knowing that came to me in my dream. I wanted to, some experiences to come through my dream, just a whole thing with that. So by the way, anything you hear me say as usual, any topic you hear me touch on and you want to hear more about, please leave a comment, hit me up, ask me about it because that helps me make the best content possible and I like to go on all these different things. So today's focus is going to be that underdog mentality versus being the favored outcome. Why do we do that? Are we more afraid? of success than we are of actually failure and it was a really big knowing for me so that's going to be my focus but what's in the works is I want to talk about my plant ceremony I had a couple weeks ago that rap was something inspired by that ceremony from those knowings taking one step at a time and I want to dive into that when I make that video so um, stay tuned for that building clarity before creating uh, heightening your awareness, bu building a foundation so you can be free, different ways to know yourself, the difference between support and depending on things, the path of least resistance. These are all things I want to touch on today. So welcome to today. And I hope you guys are ready for that. And before I get started, I want to talk about something I talked about last week, which was the puzzle piece of life, where if you look at, you can go listen to that episode. But one thing I want to add on to that before I dive into what today's morning was like, was another piece of that puzzle for the puzzle analogy was if you're moving so fast and you're trying to finish the puzzle as fast as you can, you may get some pieces in the right place, but when you're making your mistakes, you're not learning. So a lot of what I've been learning is the slowing down. So if you go back and listen to that episode, add that piece to it, pun intended, which is Notice that when you're trying to solve things so fast, sometimes the speed, even though you may get the answer quicker, you didn't really learn how you got that answer. So when you're going slow, you may get it on the first try because you're like, okay, this doesn't fit right away. Or you're not learning as well, so you can learn by slowing down as well. So a big energy for me these past couple of weeks has been slowing down, noticing the steps between that reveal themselves as we slow down. Because a lot of times for me, and this is why I want to touch on knowing yourself, is I jump ahead. So I'm not going to jump ahead. In this one, I'm going to start with today. So today's morning. I like to do my podcast every Monday morning, and this insight came to me today, which was... I woke up with a lot of different things on my mind, on my physical reality, bills and credit cards and uh, finances, all these things on my mind, but I wanted to get this podcast out. And I, you, a lot of times I say to myself, I, I'll just get inspired, I'll put those things off. But today they were too strong. So I think there's a great give and take there to notice your energies. And there is a time and place to say, you know what? I can trust that those things will get done and I will get inspired and make the best content I can. But this was too many things 
things and they were so heavy on my mind that I journaled and I wrote them out and I got things done and I crossed things off my checklist. So I'm getting to this podcast not even that much later, 11.11 by the way, in 15 seconds, so I'll say it again, but I'm getting it a couple hours later, but now I feel so free. And that is something that's about this entire journey that I love about doing the work that feels uncomfortable because sometimes you're carving one pattern for so long that you forget to kind of switch. So for example, I was tapping into an energy of getting inspired, making the best content, staying consistent with that. So fighting that and feeling like, oh, I'm not doing my podcast when I normally do it. I'm not doing the same routine. It felt uncomfortable because it was different, but it was actually what was best for me. So a huge knowing from this morning that I've learned that I was able to work through that well was something I learned from the plant ceremony and something I learned from the shaman that I'll give you one nugget from that, which is when you're trying to heighten your awareness, when you're trying to develop yourself, when you're just trying to know yourself, there are three things that are beautiful to help you with that. The first one is time and space. So simply giving things time, giving them space. So if you're really unclear, let things settle. Just like waves, I always talk about when you let them settle, you can see them more clearly. So for example, I had all these finances, I had all these different things, I had all these bills, I got tickets for parking in a garage, whatever, right? All those different things, and they're all on my mind. So I just started journaling. I didn't think I was gonna cross them off my list or pay them now, but I'm like, I gotta get them out. And that came from knowing that I, I, I felt so many waves, I felt so many, what was I just saying? I, I felt so many things moving around, right? So I felt like I needed time. And, and the space is giving it space, giving it, sitting down with it. And I actually want to talk about that in another future episode about um, creating space for creation. Like with this podcast, I sit down and let the ideas come for me. And that's what I did. So I really wanted to start making the ideas for this podcast come, but I didn't have the, I didn't have the space because my mind was so cluttered. So that's one way of controlling space or creating space is getting the things off my mind. And now I want to move on to the next one, which was after I took over those tasks, I had to do what I love to do, which is go down to the pool deck, get some sun, and I get so inspired by doing that. And one thing I wanted to share that I've learned these past couple of weeks is trusting what inspires me. Because a lot of times I'm, I have such a brilliant idea when I go do something I love, like go get the, the sun and sit out in the sun and listen to music, that I'm like... There's no way I can just tap into that genius at any time I want, but the truth is I can. And so now it, it comes up, this topic, what I'm feeling right now is the same thing as that underdog status that I want today's episode to be all about. So the quick example from this morning was I'm excited instead of saying there's no way, it's not going to help, uh, there's no way I know the answers. It's like I do know the answers and you know the answers and more of the time in my life I've noticed that I'm blocking the answers more than I don't know them. It's a lot of times I doubt myself that I know the answers and that's the same thing with physical training. I doubt I can get there so I don't try or I doubt that I can get there so I'm not trying as hard or I doubt that I can get there so I'm trying to go too fast because I'm impatient and I want to prove I have the strength that I built, right? It's all one thing. So moving on to the underdog and the dream and it'll all come full circle, which is my genius. My God. Okay. It's going to be cool. I think we'll see if I can get there. That's the trust. We'll see if I can continue the flow. If not, we're just going to get lost in the ocean, which is still fun because you're floating. Okay. Enjoy the ocean. So I had this dream where I was playing football back in the day. And when I played football, I was always the shortest kid in the all sports. And a big part of that was, um, because I was short, it allowed me to excel because I felt like the underdog. I'm like, I'm not supposed to be the, the best player. Or I'm not supposed to be the fastest, right? Because I'm like small. I had this short complex, hence why I jump, hence why I dunk. And it also led into basketball. And I started to know that when I read the book Relentless, I started to really notice my basketball mindset, which was... I really play so much better when I'm the underdog and that is because I'm supposed to lose. And I and here's where those principles that I just mentioned in the earlier the three principles of time and space. Oh, I didn't even answer the other three. I'm so see this is where I'm too uh, too fast. So the other three when you're trying to notice things about yourself, the first one is time and space, the second one is support and guidance. So when I went to the plant ceremony, it was a beautiful community plus a guided ceremony. So that was a huge benefit to me to learn and I had such a great experience to grow, learn, and I have these new tools, which I can't wait to make that video about. So stay tuned because there's so many cool tools I learned about my subconscious mind, my being, my heart, all these different things. And the third one is practice. So 
you have the time and space, you get support, you have guidance, you share with your community, and then you practice those feelings. So for example, just like training is you need to give yourself time to understand what training you need. Then you ask maybe some support, some coaches, and then you practice. Then you do it over again. You might fail. You might, you might get it right the first time, but you're practicing, right? And then that practice becomes exactly who you are and it becomes more natural. So now, Bringing it back to the underdog is because I had this dream and because I had this newfound practice of listening to those feelings, I had the dream and I said to myself, I don't think I can learn emotions from my dream or I'm not going to have a mystical experience. I'm like, let me see if I can. And then that night I had the dream. I'm like, I had an emotional feeling of being the underdog and I never sat with that long enough time to really understand uh, why that underdog was so appealing to me. And so when I sat with it, I realized I can't lose. And I used to think that was a good mindset because if I put myself in that mindset, then I, I'm free to play at my best. So when I'm playing people that are better than me in basketball, I always play up to their level because I'm supposed to lose. And so if I lose, I can't, I can't lose because I, I'm supposed to lose. Just like dunking. If I go to dunk on somebody, I say this all the time. If I'm shorter than you, I got nothing to lose. I'll freaking attack you. If I dunk on a six seven guy, which I did, I can't lose. If he blocks me, I'm supposed to I'm supposed to get blocked. If he dunks on me, I'm supposed to get dunked on, right? I'm the shorter one, I can't lose. So now when I sat with that, this is the power. When I sat with that underdog, I'm like, why do I shy away from being the opposite of the underdog? And I said to myself, what is the opposite? So I googled it. And all of this stemmed from my dream, which is pretty cool because I really had that feeling in my dream. For some reason, I was in the underdog. I was just having that thought of being the underdog in the sports. So, and a lot of times in your dreams, side note, you're emotionally healing. So if you can listen to your dreams and notice them, you can be like, hmm, why did I have that situation? It's interesting to dive into. And that's the zest of life. That's the spice of life. That's the zest of, I wish it was a Z word for life, zest of experiences. Um, so... I sat with it and I looked up the opposite of an underdog and it was favored, right? And also a synonym for underdog is loser. So I'm like, okay, great. I'm, I like being a loser. And then the opposite of an underdog is the winner or the favored outcome, right? So I'm like, and I, when I thought about that and sat with it, gave it time and sat with it and stayed with it, more thoughts came. And that's the power of journaling. I kept writing these thoughts of like, okay, why do I not want to be favored? I don't want to be favored. And I kept going with it. And the thing that came to mind, which is what I wanted to share, here's the nugget of the podcast is I was afraid that I was going to be exposed as not as good as I thought I would, as I thought I was. Screwed up the, the freaking punchline. But think about that. I was afraid of being exposed, of being a fraud. So I didn't believe in myself. So if I was favored to win and then so I didn't win, people would be like, see, he's not really that good. And I'd be like, see, I knew I wasn't as good. So it was scarier to me to be more favored. And I think that's what separates Kobe, Michael Jordan, because they're favored and they're able to believe in themselves at that level. And it all comes back to believing in yourselves. But the point is, is I've never sat with it long enough to really see myself in the favored position and see myself afraid to be exposed. And that is a lot of people's fears when it comes to creating art. You feel like you're not good enough, but it's amazing to bring it up. And I want to bring it up to you. So maybe that's not yours. It doesn't resonate with you, but whatever feeling you're a little bit afraid of, if you sit with it, you can get to the root of it. So now because I'm at the root of it, I now have a new practice to notice where other areas I don't feel good enough where I don't feel like I'm afraid to be exposed as not that, right? And then you don't let it affect you. That's where the courage comes in. That's where you practice it. That's where you say, okay, why do I feel like this? Because we are whole beings. We don't need to prove anything. We are as good as we possibly can be. That's why when you're living with intention and living your purpose, you don't have to worry about those things because you're doing the best you possibly can. But because I noticed that, I realized that was a subconscious block I had not seen before. So where else am I limiting myself and afraid to be in the favored position, which is a great position to be in because that means you're li your people see you. People see you as, as great as you are, but you also have to deal with the fact that you may fail. So yes, you're afraid of the failure, but you're almost more afraid of the success because you don't want them, to, you don't want to be seen as a success because if you're seen as the success, now you're exposing yourself or you're opening yourself up to p potential failure. So we're not as afraid as failure. We're more afraid of success because the failure is being the underdog. You're like, 
you're, you're, you're not afraid to fail. You're like, okay, I'm supposed to fail. So that's easy. But we want to be, if you want to be your full potential, you have to be willing to succeed. And that is a very interesting mindset, but I encourage you to journal about that or think about that in your life. And that was really impactful for me because now I see that. And what I learned also in, in recent practices is these belief systems. We have this experience within us and then we build sensations around it and emotions and it becomes our belief. So that's what it feels like through this experience is that was my belief and I didn't even know the root of it. So sitting with it, breaking it down, I get to the root of it and I can change the root of it. I could start a new belief system so that way I can say, you know what, I am this good or I am this thing. And you can, you can when you have that noticing, when you have that awareness, you could start building different tools around Around it, but also building awareness on all the different thoughts. So those thoughts are not just in you directing your life subconsciously. And that one is huge. So with all that being said, one of the biggest tools, one thing I've been using heavily right now, which goes back to that not believing in myself that I could have the answers is writing. Something so simple as writing down your thoughts can literally change your life. And it's hard to get to that place where it's like these little tiny thoughts can completely change the trajectory of my life. I'm going to find something subconscious in my brain that's going to change the way I see the world. This is going to change my vibration, but it truly, truly does. And the reason for that is because when you have a question and you write it down, you can write the answer and that answer could lead to more questions and it leads and it builds and you could see the way they connect. And you could also go back to those questions and sit with them longer. But if they're in your head, you go from question to answer back to another question and there is no cohesion, there's no connection between those questions. Writing is allowing you to see all your tasks, all your thoughts, and build a map. So if you see an obstacle here, an obstacle there, you can list out all the options of what happens in different scenarios, so that way it's out, it becomes a known, and we know that our brains are afraid of the unknown, so making these thoughts, making these tasks, making whatever you have to do in your life known is building that map so you can say, okay, I'm headed this way, and if this comes, I can do this. It gives you a plan of action, and that's way more more powerful than you can even realize, and I want you to experience that. So go write it out. Go use the power of the writing. The simple things are so simple to do. They're so simple not to do, but trust in that process that those little tiny steps are believing in your dream. Those little tiny steps are what lead to the big dreams. Your giant big dreams are built with baby steps. Believe in those baby steps. They need you. And just like any endeavor in life, whether it's physical, your business, you want to build a huge journey. And just like this whole episode's been about being the underdog or being the favored, being the great one, is when you're seeing that mountain, you're seeing the giant thing you want to achieve, it's hard for me, and this is my experience, I'll take it on my own responsibility, it's been hard for me to see that these tiny, tiny steps, a simple conversation, a simple thought could be the very first step to this giant mountain. It's like, is this really going to build into that? So I've noticed that I've blocked that in the past. I've said there's no way that this, this simple idea I just had in my apartment by myself is going to build this massive empire. But that's where it's heading and that's what's exciting and noticing those fears is really like wow and now because of that I've allowed more and more ideas that have become some things that I'm super proud of and so grateful for and I'm seeing them come together so I'm excited for my bigger and better projects to show you guys and I'm excited to take you along that journey as well so thank you for joining my journey thank you for sharing your journey anything you heard anything you feel I want to hear from you leave a comment let me know what you think let me know what you're working on let me know your thoughts and feelings I work with people one-on-one -on -one with that as well. I want to build a whole community, a lot of things in the works, and I know it can be overwhelming. I know you want to do all the things. If you're like me and you see the potential in the world, it's sometimes hard to just not get paralyzed and just do one thing. So I'm going to roll it out with the one-step song, the rap. It's in the works one step at a time. You're always building clarity on your path or walking the path, and even building the clarity is walking the path. So enjoy your own path. Enjoy the unfolding of all your dreams coming true and be the observer. Be like, wow. I wonder how this could work out better than I can imagine. That's just a reminder to end today is instead of all the stressors of all these tasks and all these different things, you could say to yourself, how could all these things happen better than I can imagine? If you're open to that, it's more exciting. And when you're excited, life can be magical. And that's what I want for you. So.
Enjoy. I'm seeing so deep, aren't you seeing what I see? How can I share all these feelings inside of me? Can you feel them too when I say hi to you? That paradox, I'm saying hi to me. All these years have been high to me. Now I'm done with that and I'm proud to be. Flowing effortlessly with the waves dancing through the maze. I'm, I'm gone. taking one step at a time. All I ever need. I stay connected to the vine. Got me feeling super free. I know right now this is my time. Only place I need to be. Got reminders around me, I need that. Every step I take, it always leads back. I'm one step at a time. Take it always leads back, I'm home.